Hey everyone, Little Miss Gamer here this week with a special guest. That's right, we have Levy Neiman back once again, pinball expert. Um, how has everything been going with pinball and such with you? Um, you know, just uh, I've been spreading more uh, pinball expertise. I've been um, you know, moving some machines. Uh, I was up in Monticello last weekend delivering a, a Super Mario pinball for the kids. Uh, the Indiana Jones pinball just came out. Um, you know, if you look at the movie schedule, uh, Stern usually just comes out with a couple uh, movie themes every year. Mm -hmm. And this year it's Indiana Jones. And uh, I happen to know that at Muggs in uh, Brooklyn, um, they've actually just installed one uh, yesterday. If you want to go out and check it out. All right. So, Levy, the last time that we hung out, you had said that you hadn't really played very many um, video game pinball games. And so I was wondering if you would be interested in kind of taking on a few of these games that hardcore gamers think of as being some of the best pinball games out there. Uh, I got no problem with that. Um, if I recall, I didn't say I hadn't played any. I just said I didn't like any. Um, <laughs> but I'd be more than willing to, to give, a, give whatever you have a shot. All right. Well, we got uh, three here, and uh, we're going to try them out, okay? Excellent. All right. So, Levy, the first game that we're going to play is for a system called the TurboGrafx-16. It does have a game for uh, pinball that a lot of people were really into, and people still talk about today, and that's called Alien Crush. Have you ever heard of this game? Never. All right, so we're going to put it to the test and see what you think. It's critically acclaimed by a lot of hardcore gamers as being the best pinball game. Welcome to the beauty that is the TurboGrafx-16. All right, so we'll go fast, and then which one? Lunar Eclipse or Demons oh, Undulate? Let's, let's undulate, shall we? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> okay. I like the sound of that. All right, let's make this happen here. All right, so, this can be so your you got some rollovers game. there. It's kind of neat. There are definitely a lot of undulating appendages in this game. It doesn't say where the alien came from. It just says that nothing can prepare you for this ultimate alien encounter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. Now the physics uh, are pretty good, you know? The ball doesn't go through the flippers or anything silly like that. Mm -hmm. Now this music is strictly 8-bit, huh? They kind of kind of fell asleep on the job for that, huh? <laughs> I like the snarling jaw drop targets on the left. That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Very um, Geiger-esque. Yeah, this is definitely a rip, ripping off the old alien thing. You know, and, and as a matter of fact, Bally did that themselves in 1980, 1980 with the Space Invaders pinball. They did a Space Invaders pinball, but the artwork was all ripped off from Geiger. Really? Who promptly sued them, and they just gave him a couple of pinball machines to shut him up. And really? Was, yeah. Really, I guess he just wanted a couple of pinballs, because that's all it took. Huh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Ah, see, I, I tilted there. To... Good job. Uh, you know, the, I will say the, the flipper, the aim is very good. I mean, you can generally aim at something and hit it. Um, it seems a little easy. I mean, maybe it's, are we playing on an easy level or something, or am I just that damn good? The ball is a little heavy in that it comes to a, like, you shouldn't really be able to trap a ball just by putting your flipper up. And this thing just mm -hmm. stops dead, you know? Mm hmm Do you wish that the board would change at all as, as you well, get more Well, I would, but that's kind of funny considering a real pinball machine doesn't do that. Mm hmm But, I mean, you know, this seems to me that this would get a little dull after a while. Oh, know, there, there you go. go. Hey, look at these guys. Little, uh, Slimers. They didn't, they, they never met the license they didn't want to rip off for this game. You lost your ball. Yeah, I didn't do too well. I just waste this uh, Space Harrier slug. Are you saying that you're having a good time? Uh, I, at this point I'm just kind of in a trance. <laughs> you know, it's like waiting online at the DMV. I wouldn't say I'm enjoying myself, but I've managed to kind of put myself into a stupor where I'm just kind of <laughs> of the moment, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we just played Alien Crush. Overall thoughts? Sucks. Okay. All right, so now we're going to play a PS2 game. Um, this one is the Gottlieb Collection, the Pinball Hall of Fame, and uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. Um, I played it a little bit, but um, I'd be interested to see what you think. And there's multiplayer in this game, so that means that we can both play as well. Nice. Awesome. So look, we're trying to make it seem like a, an arcade yeah, I'm doing a pretty good job. I don't see any pimples or cigarettes, but... <laughs> Alright, so we're going to pick a table. Now we have our selection. 
Two grand. Interesting. Yeah. How about uh, how about uh, how about black hole? Okay. That's probably the coolest of the bunch, you know, in real life. Believe it or not, I think it was a license because the the same company I think owned uh, Columbia Pictures owned uh, Gottlieb. It, there was actually a movie called Black Hole, and this was kind of a, a half-ass tie-in to it. I like the way they simulate the uh, the uh, LED displays. That's pretty cool. I like the sounds. They they really sampled the uh, the mechanical sounds. Oh, that's kind of cool. So that's the the lower oh, play it's field. Upside down. Yeah, that's how it was. Oh, oh, oh. It's kind of neat, right? <laughs> So he wasn't expecting it. Oh, you lost sure. the ball there. Oh. I got a litany of complaints about this thing. It looks great, and it sounds good from what I can hear. The uh, the sound is like mm -hmm. just like it was. The physics are terrible. Sometimes the ball seems like it weighs like an ounce, and that the table is very shallow. It just kind of flutters mm -hmm. down. And then other times it rockets around like it's the fastest game ever made. But I've got to tell you, it just it just feels like there's not a lot of skill here. The ball just kind of does whatever the hell it wants. It doesn't pay a lot of attention to how you hit it. It's, it's, you know, balls don't just stop like that for no reason. So would you say that it's... Um... I would say this is a monstrosity. <laughs> an offense to really both video games and pinball, which is hard to do at the same time. Is this... Although uh, Bally did it with Baby Pac-Man. But when I first got this game, and when I was looking at the store, I was so psyched because these are tables that you can't find nowadays very easily you know i like that these games are out people mm -hmm. play them probably a lot of kids get these because i know these are like budget priced right these are cheaper you can get this mm -hmm. for like 15 bucks mm -hmm. and like kids maybe would play some pinball whereas you know they would they would not know about it otherwise which i think is definitely a good thing you know anything that exposes people to pinball is good like uh, i said i'm psyched that but, i get to see what the tables look like sure but i just don't i i don't feel like i'm really playing I'll tell you what, this does not play anything like the actual game. Because mm -hmm. I've had this game, mm -hmm. and like the way the ball came out of that chute, and like the way the ball, you know, comes off the slingshots, mm -hmm. it just doesn't play anything like the actual pinball table. And I find that to be very off-putting and, and even insulting. So it doesn't do justice to the, to the table itself. I just don't think they actually had one of these tables, you know, mm -hmm. to maybe if they'd actually brought a couple of these machines into the, to the place where they were, they were coding it or, or what have you, you know, that maybe they would have come up with something a little, a little better. So this game is called Pinball FX, okay. and this is on the Xbox Live Arcade. You can actually play other people around the world on this game, and we can have multiplayer, and there's lots of different options that it, it offers. Um, your flippers are these two things right here, Got it. which I really, well, you'll, you'll, you'll tell me what you think, but I like the feel of, uh, of that already. Instead of having like some buttons with my thumbs, I actually like, it, it feels like you're pressing something. I'm down. All right, so we have Speed Machine, Extreme, Agents, and Buccaneer. Ooh, let's go with that one. There was actually a uh, Gala game called Buccaneer from 1976. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm sure it's not really the same. But... This one has a cannon. <laughs> cool. Um, you can change the camera. To launch the ball, um, I'm going to press A, which is the green button. Flipper sound is terrible. Really? You don't think it sounds like flippers? I just don't think it's necessary. Oh, okay. Initial reaction, watch, looking at it. The graphics are pretty cool. Yeah. Oh. Fast. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, sympathy ball, just yeah. like the real pinball. That's cool. No, I just, what I mean is that there you've got background music, but there's really no in-game sounds like a modern pinball machine would have. It's, I mean, you've played a, a latter day pinball machine. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm mm -hmm. surprised there's not speech and like. That's true. Kind of cool sounds like that. Said so you just got these obnoxious flipper clicks. Yeah, it feels pretty good, you know? It's, it's a little faster than it would probably be, but you know, I, I don't have a problem with that. It's a video game, right? Okay, so we're going to try a different table. This is actually the demo table for the game because on Xbox Live you get to demo a lot of games. And like then a, that for makes free. You... Mm -hmm. This is a very, so. very appealing. Um, Playfield layout, mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> That's kind of cool. That, that uh, bowl mm -hmm. is like a creature from a black lagoon. A little upper playfield action. Ah! Ah, I got the, uh, my airbag was Mercy lit. Mercy ball. Thank <laughs> God for Ralph Nader on that one. 
it's real fast. I, I, it you know, fast. maybe. If, but again, you know, I'm just there's probably people who are really good at this, right? So I'm just kind of I'm just kind of belly aching. But I suck. It's you, it's completely unrealistic as far as how a pinball machine would actually play. Hmm. If a pinball were this fast and the flippers were this powerful, virtually every piece of plastic in the machine would be pulverized within about a week. Now, if you want to see that, I can actually do a flipper pass on this game. That's kind of cool. See? Huh? What mm -hmm. do you think of that? Mm -hmm. Pretty sweet, huh? At least they got that right. Well, then let's do a comparative study. Alien Crush versus Pinball Hall of Fame Gottlieb Collection right. versus Pinball FX. I guess I'll go with uh, this is number one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks the best. Number two would be Alien Crush. You know, it's good if you can't get to sleep or something. You can just play that for a couple of hours until <laughs> you start to get tired. Uh, and the Gottlieb one is um, just terrible. Just just horrible in every aspect. It looks all right. But I got to say, this is a whole experience. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to repeat it anytime soon. No? Yeah. I do it for you. Uh -huh. I mean, well, you know. that's sweet. Thanks. Because I like your show. <laughs> but it's, it's just, uh, there's just something missing there from the whole experience mm -hmm. that you just, you just can't even come close to pulling off. I don't know why that is. We can't make I, you I just can't it. imagine anybody really plays this more than once, you know. Hmm. You get it for Christmas from your relative you don't really know that well because it was in the bargain bin. You throw it in there. You play it a couple times. Your parents play it a couple times. And then you go back to Halo or whatever, you know, or whatever you get. I don't know. I was really impressed, especially with when I played the demo for the Pinball Effects game. I was like, yeah, I think they finally got it. But it, I do agree that it is a little fast. My closing thoughts would be that, uh, you know, we've, we've looked at 15 years of, uh, 20 years of video mm -hmm. pinball history here. And, and, you know, just what I thought coming in was pretty much the same as, as I still think. That they just, you know, they, they get the graphics right and they, you know, they come up with some cool stuff. But it's just very, very tough to take a, a huge, you know, commercial pinball machine and to recreate it as a, as a simulation uh, mm -hmm. for a video game system. I think people will always like the real tables, and I mean, people are always nostalgic for the real arcade feel. I mean, even now it's so hard to find a good sure. arcade. And maybe this will, you know, get somebody or at least somebody's parents thinking about, you know, nostalgia, and they want to go out and pick up a real pinball See? machine. There so. you go. It might actually help your business. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lovey. Well, um, I think we're gonna go do some viewer mail. Um, so I don't know. Let's uh, let's go do that. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Hey everyone, Little Miss Gamer here to do viewer mail this week from Front Stoop. Hey Z, heard in your A Boy in His Blob review that you wanted to have people send you quirky or innovative games. It's true, I did. I'll tell you three of my favorites. You probably heard of the game Portal. I love that game. Another game you might not have heard of is Kirby Dream Course. The final game of the three is called Adventures of Lolo. It's so inventive because your character isn't blessed with power, speed, or agility. He has courage. He doesn't hurt people, except the last boss. Totally a classic game. It's pretty awesome, and I definitely would love to review that as well. Thank you for writing in. Dear Little Miss Gamer, I recently saw your review of A Boy and His Blob on Screw Attack and thought it was wonderful. I had the game as a child and recently played it through again myself. While I don't have any information on what happened to the sequel for the DS, I thought you might be interested in this little Easter egg which was never meant to be seen in the final release of the game. It is basically a screen that you can fall to that shows an incomplete limerick. From here you can also see the end credits and title screen as well as other glitched areas. But thank you so much, Nick. Um, this is from Nick at sketchystories.com. So thank you so much for showing us that limerick. It's awesome. What a weird little glitch to have in a game, huh? <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in this week. And this is Little Miss Gamer saying, keep playing. <laughs> now, I hit this button and it didn't work. Oh, what's it going to hurt to make both of these do the flipper? Uh, you know.